The lakes in the Bandar Mir National Park in the Bamiyan province are breathtakingly blue. Here in the Hindu Kush mountains in central Afghanistan, there's no trace of the country's ongoing war. It's an extraordinarily scenic, tranquil spot. But where are the tourists? Only a handful of intrepid travelers have found their way here to yeah. Afghanistan's Grand Canyon so far. Najiba Alavi runs a hotel overlooking one of the lakes. She shows us around, pointing out that each room has a double bed, a stove and hot water. She's been running the hotel for five years, but it's empty. Not a single guest this year so far. We had a few guests last year, but no one comes anymore. Afghanistan is seen as too unsafe. In fact, Bamyan is relatively safe. The way there, through the mountains, less so. The only way for tourists to get here is by plane. Najiba wants nothing more than to be able to greet guests and make them feel welcome. It saddens me that no one comes here. I opened a hotel to make a living. And to show visitors this beautiful scenery. Bamyan is truly picturesque. 3,000 meters above sea level, it feels like it's on top of the world. But it wasn't always so idyllic. The lakes are situated just west of the famous Buddhas of Bamiyan, two 6th century monumental statues carved into the side of a cliff. They were destroyed by the Taliban in 2001. Plans to reconstruct them have stalled in the absence of the necessary funding. The cliffs and the valley are now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Despite the many hotels that have gone up in recent years, the guests just aren't there. We would like tourists to come here and tell everyone at home about us. There's more to Afghanistan than war and terror. It is also home to peaceful, calm places. 4,000 people visited Bamyan last year, not enough to sustain a tourist industry. Nevertheless, other parts of the country are faring better. Sima Goriani runs a successful business in Herat, western Afghanistan. The province is famous for its saffron fields. Female entrepreneurs are few and far between. It's difficult as a woman, but when I'm working, I'm not constantly thinking about the fact that I'm a woman, and no one else refers to it either. A role model for other Afghan women and also to other farmers to make the switch from opium to saffron production. Opium used to be traded on our street, but the situation has changed a lot. Saffron has become a profitable alternative for many Afghans. I mean, why should we Muslims earn our living with something un-Islamic? Saffron is a valuable commodity. A gram sells at about four euros. Sima Goriani has been growing it for 18 years. Here, hope is in the air. Many in Afghanistan are proud that the presidential elections got off to a peaceful start in early April. But there is still room for improvement. Election fraud remains a problem, and the outcome is still uncertain. Sima Goriani is optimistic. She has 15 employees, almost half of whom are women. She exports to Germany, Dubai and Russia. She'd like to expand, but the instability in Afghanistan is still an obstacle. I think people want the country to finally have a good, functioning government. They want more stable lives. They want fewer worries. Seema's seven daughters are helping to shape that future. Two of them help out in the business. They're at university studying medicine and graphic design. They're also hopeful that the elections will usher in a new dawn. It's up to the people to decide. I'm young. I think that when people understand that they can choose their president, many of our problems will be solved. Most Afghans want peace and security as I do myself. Najiba from Banyan agrees, and she hopes the situation in Afghanistan will start to change soon, and more tourists will come to admire the beautiful views of Banda Amir.